This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian is pretty busy this week, going to be going to a number of uh, places in Cary and Finley uh, this week. This Monday, they will be up at North Vance Street in Cary, Ohio from 11 to 3. On the 15th, Wednesday, the corner of North and Patterson in Cary, Ohio from 4 to 7. This Thursday at the Shrine Cafeteria in Cary, Ohio, 4 to 7. This uh, Friday at the Millstream Credit Union on Fostoria Avenue in Finley, Ohio from 11 to 3. And this next Sunday on the 19th, they'll be up at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery on Tiffin Avenue in Finley from 11 to 6. If you missed any of that, check out his social medias on Facebook, on Twitter, to figure out where him and his food truck are heading to next. Med Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, veteran-owned, micro-roast, hand-roast, roast-to-order coffee company. I tried to switch it up there. I don't know if it went well or not. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Um, I told you they were Ohio based. They are more specifically in Toledo, more specifically yet still in Perrysburg, Ohio. Um, all of their beans are imported directly from coffee farms in places like Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far off lands. Um, some of their most popular coffees are available in K-Cup. Gift cards are available. Subscribe and save is available, and you get free shipping over $50. I'll tell you some more about the individual uh, coffee blends that they have in the next ad read. But if you want to find that out for yourself, go ahead and go to ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Chandler Jones has five sacks today. They're talking NFL down in our live chat. Five sacks. Now that that's how you that's how you start. That's how you start a season. That's crazy. As in Tyler Lewan, Austin. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that that does make it better. You're right. Oh, Taylor. Tyler, Taylor, whatever. He's from Michigan. I don't care. All right. We got a lot to talk yes. to you about today, Jared. So let's, let's hop right into it. <laughs> I know, but we got to. Let's hop into it. <laughs> We've got Barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloop Guest. How are you doing today, Kyle? Um, as well as it can be. <laughs> as well as it can be. So Kyle, I woke up this morning and I looked outside. Mm -hmm. Um, the sun came up, everything's fine. We we're we're still spinning. We're still alive, we're still spinning, everything's gonna be okay. Um mm -hmm. there's issues. Uh there's issues with Ohio State. Uh that's that that's the go without saying. Um I know because you're in here you so you're alive, Austin. You're in here so you're alive. It's fine. Um the yeah. I, I don't even necessarily know where to start with everything that's gone wrong with Ohio State football uh this past week. I think maybe the place to start to me is coaching. I I think you turned over a lot of the defense talent wise. There's a lot of new faces on the defense. And yet we still have a lot of the same problems. So where else, how else are we supposed to proceed other than with coaching? And, and Kyle and I, we spent a great deal of the off season and a great deal of last season saying, Hey, everyone chill out on Kerry Combs the pandemic and the lack of coaching opportunity because of players being out and everything else. I think we have to chill on, on, on Kerry comes a bit. And I think 
one of the things you have to do just as a human in general um, is admit when you are wrong. And I think it's it's time for at least me to admit when I was wrong and, and say that I don't want to say I was wrong for being patient with Carrie Combs. I, I, I think patience is, in fact, a virtue. Um, but the the patience has run out. Uh, the honeymoon is over. Uh, the excuses are are over. And I, I want to also include Al Washington in this because the linebackers continue to struggle. Yeah, no, absolutely. We, we gave them that pass just because last year, COVID, COVID happened and everything that went along with not not much practicing the the amount of turnover from the secondary. So we we gave Kerry Coombs a Cubs. um thank you. <laughs> Kerry Coombs a um a uh a pass for last year, but yeah, just not acceptable right now, especially with the talent that Ohio State has right now. Uh it, it's not a it's not a matter of talent either. Ohio State's been recruiting as well as the top dogs right now in past years. So it's not recruiting. It's not talent. So it, it's got to come down to the defensive coordinators, the position coaches on this team here. So look no further than what Jared just mentioned with Kerry and Al Washington. Yeah. And yeah, um, Austin, the linebackers have been issues for years and it hasn't been fixed. Um, I agree. I I don't know why Cody Simon isn't getting more snaps. Um, I He seems to be an absolute burst of energy when he is out there. Why he's not getting there. There shouldn't be any linebackers getting more snaps in my mind than Cody Simon. He's the only linebacker I see who's consistently, whether it be against the run or against the pass consistently making plays consistently in the right position. I I don't know how if you have one linebacker on the field, if you go into a a if you go into a package in which you have one linebacker on the field, that person needs to be Cody Simon. And that's just not even a question for me anymore. Um and Ohio State's you know we, we we branded our Monday episode standard and grade. So let's let's do that because otherwise we're just going to talk all over the place. So, Kyle, let's start with the yep. coaching. I know that's not first in our list, but that's what we're talking about. And I believe it to be the 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 issue in play here. What, what do you give overall? And this is offense, defense, head coaching, all of it. The entire the entire kit. I, I give it a D plus. I give it a D plus just because of there was they had things going right. Um, not all game, but for quite a bit of the game, I think they did some things well offensively. Yeah, uh, definitely a lot of questionable play calling on third down, on fourth down, and some decision making from CJ Stroud as well but talking about coaching here right i i right. think i think the play calling offensively well but man defense is is just play calling which we'll get to here in a little bit but yeah i think combining all of that i would i would give it a d plus uh yeah i, I i'm going to go i'm going to do a straight d um and mm-hmm. that's only because i think that they're doing well offensively coaching the ball. Um, Ryan Day has had some game management decisions that I have not agreed with um, the past two weeks. Um, Offensively, I think they've done a fantastic, fantastic job trying to get CJ Stroud up to speed. Um, There's a lot of lazy, I'm just going to say lazy fans, lazy armchair analysts out there who just want to blame the quarterback for everything. And, Like, I'm not saying CJ Stroud is Justin Fields and it's, but it's not fair to expect him to be. And that's another Kyle. And I said that all off season, um, he's a red shirt, freshman quarterback. You can't expect him to be Justin Fields right away. That's just not fair. Yeah. Getting to Justin Fields here or well, just (laughs) getting to CJ Stroud here. 
I, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't want to leave the coaching conversation yet. I don't, I don't want to get too yeah. far no, ahead. No, the, there were, there's some things, um, um, over at the Buckeye scoop. I will, I won't repeat because it's actually a lot of great information, insider stuff from Nevada book. Uh, so I won't, I won't repeat a lot of things, but there, let's just say, let's just say there's a reason why Ohio state's defense looked as bad as they did because Oregon knew Oregon knew what was happening. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, Austin says fields was a red shirt freshman when he started too. though. I get the argument. I, Technically, no, he wasn't. He he was a sophomore. Uh, he did not redshirt while he was at Georgia. He did get some snaps while he was at Georgia, although never as. No, he was a sophomore at Ohio State. Um, I thought they used uh, the four game rule. No, uh, he was absolutely a sophomore at Ohio State. Uh, I don't know if the four game rule was. But anyway, he he actually got a fair amount of snaps while at Georgia. Not all, not in like real game quarterback, like honest snaps, but he did get a lot of snaps while he was at Georgia um, in, a, in a, you know, compared to considering he was the backup quarterback. So considering he's but he actually got a fair amount of snaps at Georgia, but also Justin Fields is legitimately like one of the top four or five highly ranked quarterback recruits of all time. So. Also acknowledge that like he and Trevor Lawrence, who is Trevor Lawrence being just a, it was literally like a thousandth of a point higher ranked than Justin Fields. That those two guys are anomalies uh, as far yeah. as like being immediately good, right? You just like right away. Mm -hmm. So coaching but, here. Um, I, yeah. Coaching. Go, go, going back to the, yeah. Sorry. Going back to the coaching here. It's yeah, it's everybody, everybody, whether you're on social media, whether you're in our discord, everybody knew that our state's scheme needed to change. And we were hoping to see that in the second half, but it was more of the same thing where you, Oregon was running the same play, getting the same eight and a half plus yards for those for those running to the left and kicking it out, moving a tight end in motion, clearing it out. Everybody knew what was happening, but how state, or I'll, I'll just say Kerry was just being stubborn and not changing his scheme at all. And you, you got to get away from that. You got to get away, especially if you know that the type of offense that your opponent is running and your scheme that you're wanting to run for most of the year is not going to work. You need to change it up. You have to. Yeah, I, I agree. And by the way, Austin uh, playing devil's advocate, yours is the best quarterback recruit. Yeah, but he's not, I get that. He's a, and by the way, I know that you aren't saying this cause you, you said devil's advocate. So I, I, I acknowledge that yours isn't even, yeah, I know yours is a freshman, but he's not a freshman. He's a high school senior <laughs> and he's been with the team for less than a month. So, yeah, whole whole different right. story there. Uh, if I were doing and we're not, if I was doing just a grade for the defensive side of the ball, coaching wise, it's a straight F. A straight F. It's yeah, a straight, straight F. F. Um, there's there's no like offensively, they probably get like a B, and if we're talking strictly offensive coaching a B or better, I don't know. I didn't put, we, we did, we're not doing that. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Cause all maybe, maybe it's just, I don't know. Cause all, ultimately you have to score points and they had red zone issues and all of that. It's not all about yards. Um, but yeah, defensive coaching is a straight F. Um, Everything Ohio State was doing yesterday defensively was basic and predictable and everything a defense can't be. It was plain. It was vanilla. It was predictable. Um, you can't you. I'm not saying you can't ever run a man defense, and I'm not saying Ohio State doesn't have the talent to run a man defense. 
I'm not saying either of those things. What I'm saying is, is that you can't essentially run the same defensive scheme the entire football game, which is what Ohio State was doing. If I say 90 percent of the time, I feel like I'm being generous. I feel like to say they were doing something outside of what they were doing the entire time, more than 10 percent of the time, I feel like I'm being generous. Uh, I, I feel like 90 percent. I feel like it's a real generous number. I feel like they were basically running the exact same scheme 90 plus percent of the time and you you can't do that you you can't essentially give away the playbook to the other team yep and Oregon knew exactly what Ohio State was going to do before they did it they scored their first three touchdowns against Ohio State using the exact same running play against Ohio State's exact same defense that, by the way, featured a pulling guard that the guard didn't have anyone to block on all three of those touchdowns. That's how wide open the field was. This is how wide open the field was. Is that the the pulling offensive lineman just basically walked in with the running back. And it happened three times. One time, okay, hey, you got us. Good job. Three, three <laughs> times. Um, it's not essentially all, all Oregon was doing was pulling the wide receiver into motion, leaving the field empty on the short side of the field, and then running a stretch play with a pulling guard as a lead blocker. And it was, it was just money every time. All right. It absolutely was. All right. So yeah, coaching staff, I, I think we'll, I think we'll, I'll, we'll just stick with the D rating here. So um, let's, let's talk about the, um, the rest of the defense here. So the defensive line, what would you give them a rating of? The defensive line. Mm -hmm. So I feel like um, in Last week's episode, we kind of gave a decent grade, maybe a better grade than we should have to maybe some of the corners because they were so young. So I feel like we've we've kind of established this sort of grading based off of expectation. And if we're grading based off of expectation. The defensive line gets a straight F. I'm sorry, they get a straight F. It's yeah, this was supposed to be the strength of this defense. You're supposed to have these young linebackers and these young defensive backs, but it's okay because we have Haskell Garrett coming back and we have five star Zach Harrison ready to take over. And we got Tyreek Smith ready to take over. And where the hell were they yesterday? Raleigh said it best. Zero quarterback pressures, no sacks. And I think they only had one tackle for loss all game. Is that true? One. One. They did that one tackle for loss the entire game. I need confirmation on that because um, I said that. One. They have one. That's insane. And it was a it would it was a half, it was a half tackle for loss for Garrett and half tackle loss for Vincent. Yeah, it's yeah, if if we get if we're going to give leniency to the young groups. Then we have to grade the defensive line more strictly and they get a straight F. Yeah, straight F. I, I completely agree. Yeah. Oh, if you said also nomad, apologize. I'm looking at the very bottom <laughs> of the page there. So if you said a nomad, I'll give you credit too. Um, linebackers. I'd give them. Honestly, I give them an F as well. Just being very too reactive to plays. Keep, they're having their eyes in the backfield instead of their man, and it's cost them way, way too many times. Whether the running back goes out or you have a um, tight end that comes out too, it's just terrible. They, the, the linebacker group play terrible now when cody simon came in they play yeah. better one of the things i'd give them a, i'd give them enough one of the things that bothers me and I, i've seen both mitchell and eichenberg do this a lot is like on a run play they seem to like 
and I'm not talking about pre-snap, I'm talking after the snap, they tend to like run up to the line of scrimmage and like engage blockers instead of like trying to scrape to where the hole is and fill the gap. I think they're doing like, a terrible job that, that, filling the gap. That's what happened in 2019 and what everybody was getting pissed about where, well, in, where the linebackers were filling up and then left that wide open space right behind them in that five, 10 yard mark there. That's what I feel like what happened pre- in this game. That was pre-snap when they were doing, I think 2018, was that 2018? It was it Shauna's, 2018 or 19, Shauna's 19, last year yeah. where the linebackers were playing a lot, basically standing on the line of scrimmage. But that's not exactly what's happening here because they are starting behind the line of scrimmage, but they tend to just sort of go forward without actually reading the play. I, like Kyle said, I don't feel like they're reading the play effectively. And I that goes back to coaching. I'm I'm that all goes back to coaching, in my opinion. So it all sort of relates back to that. But the fact of the matter is, yeah, the linebackers get enough. Yeah. Now, defensive backs, I'll get I'll give them a I'll probably give them one of the highest ratings. I'll, I'll probably give them a B. The I think corners. I think overall the defensive backs well, the did corners. really well. Yes, the corners. Yeah. The corners I thought did really well. So I'd give them a B. Uh, I'd give yeah. them a B. Um, yeah, wild. This was supposed to be the weakness of the team, right? Um, Denzel mm-hmm. Burke took an amazing step forward from week one to week two. Amazing step forward. He was real shaky in week one. Then he looked like a boss in week two. Um, yeah, we're 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 getting there, gangland. Um, this uh, Cam Brown came back this week, and I thought that he looked really good for a guy for a corner coming back from his first his first game after completely blowing up his Achilles. He was not perfect. I don't think we should have expected him to be perfect coming back, but he flashed greatness and he did. He really flashed greatness. Um, yeah. Uh, agreed. Uh, Cavazos is not ready. He's, he's just not ready. He's young. He's not ready yet. We, he needs a little bit more time in the oven. I think. Um, Burke's very yeah. young. Um, he's he's a true freshman. Um, so that's what makes a lot of it so impressive. I'm insanely yeah. impressed by Denzel Burke right now. So yeah. incredibly yeah. impressed. He, he, he does remind me a lot like Arnett. He does. He does. Uh, Gangland asked, um, what the f- is going on with seven? I have no idea. Dude's not showing up on the injury report. Therefore, we have to assume that he's not injured. But he's not playing. He is warming up. He's done this twice in a row now. He's warmed up before the game. Not appeared on the injury report before the game. Mm -hmm. And then has just straight not played. And if you want to try and say, well, maybe Burke and Brown took his spot. But then like, how is Cavazos getting on the field? None of it makes sense. Um, something else is happening there. I. But 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 what? What is that something else? Because Ohio State does not typically hide injuries uh, or ever hide injuries. They don't ever hide disciplinary stuff. So. So what is it? And this was supposed to be the guy who was supposed to be the guy this year for for the corners. Um, yeah. It's it's I don't I don't know. It, it feels like a total mystery to me. Yeah, it's it's a complete mystery to all of the um, Buckeye insiders, too. There's it's a complete mystery right now. Um, all right. in the in the safeties here, Jared. Safeties, I want to give. It's weird because. I feel like I, I, Proctor when he played was great. But that's it. Like, I, I can't really say anything nice about anyone else. That's why I was going to give them like a D. Yeah, and especially like moving forward, because at this point we can make the assumption that. That Proctor's yeah. out for the rest of the year. Um, yeah, they, they brought him there's, an there's air some... cast and a cart immediately um, immediately and you know when they when they cover his leg up not just not just with the um 
with the air cast, but you put a towel over the injury to no one else can see it. Yeah. yeah just it's, it's bad. Uh, I, yeah. I don't, don't, don't expect Proctor the rest of the season. No, so that's, no, no. that's a big, big blow for, uh, for the Gangland said defense. he thought ransom and Hickman did well. Um, I, I don't agree. Um, I, I I think that they that again they're young. I'm not I'm not bashing them. They're very good players. I think they'll be very good players. They're just not there yet. And this was this was yep. part of the problem. We knew coming in that the secondary was going to be talented and inexperienced, and but that the defensive line was supposed to make up for that, and they aren't. Kyle, we're going so far over yep. right now let's do a quick ad read yep we'll come back and we'll do the the offense all right so let's go in here from the mckinney barbecue company uh i'll just read off the the um dates again for those who missed at the beginning of the show so if you want some of that delicious med canadian barbecue food from the mad canadian food truck he'll be in Kerry. This Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, Monday will be at North Vance Street. Wednesday will be at the corner of North and Patterson. And this Thursday will be at the Shrine Cafeteria. Um, and then this Friday, he'll be at the Millstream Credit Union on Fostoria Avenue in Finley from 11 to 3. And this Sunday... We have the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery on Tiffin Avenue in Finley, Ohio, from 11 to 6. Uh, if you haven't had any of his food and you're in that area, I'd highly recommend go grab, a, go grab a lunch, go grab dinner, depending on the timing, and go get some of the food. It's so, so good. Um, if you get any of these times or dates, check out his social medias, Facebook on Twitter, search, search for Mac and Eating Barbecue. And you'll find find him and all the information you need from there. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of this loop guest also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company. I already did all that. Uh, local and marine owned, fresh roasted, all that. We we did that in the first ad read. Let's talk about some of their individual coffees, like the Fear No Evil, uh, which is not even a dark roast. It's a straight black roast. It's roasted to the brink of flames. It's rich dark uh it's void of all light it has a beautiful sheen to it uh it looks like polished armor has a, a feel of like cocoa butter uh it's an amazing coffee their flagship roast uh which is another dark roast uh it's called the integrity it's it's their like i said it's their flagship roast of the entire company um they highly recommend it if you're an espresso person that this this would be the coffee that you would pick to make your espressos um if we're looking at some other dark roast, there is the Fierce, um, which is made with 100% Arabica beans. Uh, let's see what else. We have the Rocco, which is available both medium and dark, um, which he says is a special and unique Ethiopian natural. Uh, he says it's for those who enjoy their uh, and coffees that insist on being noticed. And then, Kyle, I believe this one's personally my favorite of the of the dark roast over at the iron bean coffee company. It's the drink from the skull of your enemy. It's a traditional Indonesian, Indonesian coffee. Uh, it's edgy and it's smoky. Um, kind of has like notes of like cedar and tobacco and wine and spice. It's, it's a very, um, complex coffee. I, I really enjoy it. Um, so if you want to check that out or a bunch of other amazing coffees, I've barely scratched the surface, go to ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle, um, we, we need to move a little bit fast here because we're basically already at the half hour mark, which is supposed to be our um, <laughs> supposed to be our spot that we're aiming for. Not that we will ever hit that, but that's supposed to be what we're aiming for. So let's. The offense, I feel like, is significantly less of the issue right now. Um, that's not to say that they are perfect. That's not to say they are without their flaws. But I, I don't feel like the offense is the problem right now. Um, yep. And I feel Absolutely. like a lot of the problems that will be solved or that need to be solved will be solved simply by CJ Stroud continuing to get experience. 
agree. So real quick here, quarterback, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to give the quarterback a B. I, I thought overall, I thought CJ Stroud did really well. Now, some of his decision-making early, early on, high throws, it, you saw yep. a lot of people were saying it. I think if he can hold on to the ball and some of those RPOs, get a little bit more confidence, be a little bit more stronger with the ball, I think it'll make him a better quarterback. But I give him a B overall. I'm going to go B plus. Again, I'm grading on a scale here of him. Again, like with the defensive line, I'm going to hold them to a higher standard because of what we expected of them but I'm going to hold CJ Stroud to what I believe to be a more appropriate standard as a, a guy making his second ever, not just start, but appearance in a college football game. Yep. So I'm going to go B plus personally. I think he's, okay. he's not perfect yet, but he's getting, he's getting where he needs to be. I think he played yeah. very well. Yep. Uh, running back, running back. Man, I, I feel like the running backs were very just non-existent, but I think when they, when they did get the ball, I thought they did really well. So yeah. maybe, maybe B minus. I'm I'm, I'm going to actually disagree with you here. And I'm going to say a, because I don't, I don't think they were the problem. I, and we'll, we'll get to that here in a couple positions. Well, and one, one good thing too, that I'd like to see from uh, Trevion yes. Henderson, what gangland said, the running back as, 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 a, was as, a, as a, as a true, as a true freshman, getting out there and picking up those blitzes. That's good. That's, that's what we're waiting to see from Travion. And the more he's does that, the more he's going to take more snaps, which by the way, he got 12 carries in this game. Right. All right. Uh, wide receivers, wide receivers. How can you not give them an A? Honestly, I how agree. could you not give them an A? You got totally. three receivers that went for over a hundred yards. The first time in Ohio state history, JSN, Alave, Wilson, spectacular, spectacular. I got to give him an A. Uh, yeah. you, you could probably, uh, you could probably give him an A minus. No. There were some drops here and there, but uh, that, as a whole, uh, as, as a whole, and especially early on when CJ Stroud was throwing the ball high and them having to make adjustments to catch the ball high. Yeah, I, I, I give him a solid A. Gangland, the only drop that i would consider egregious was was by a tight end um so i i i feel totally comfortable giving them an a okay so the tight end we'll, we'll go to the tight end then i i give the tight ends a b I, they know, played all right where were i mean they where were right. they but it's also not their fault that i don't know where mm -hmm. they were necessarily specifically rucker i don't know why the first big tight end pass and maybe it's because you were hoping they weren't going to be expecting it, but they were because um, because he was completely covered. But. I, I don't know why your first like big down the field pass to a tight end all year was to not Jeremy Ruckert. Yeah. And then the ball ends up getting dropped, and I think that that leads to Ohio State getting a second touchdown in the first quarter if that ball is held on to. Yep. All right. Offensive alignment. Offensive lineman, Jared. Again, if we have to grade based off of expectation, and if we have to grade based off of experience, they get an F. Uh, you, the Ohio State was supposed to win this game because of, of the trenches. Ohio State lost this game. If I had to break it down to three reasons, if I had to break it down to three reasons, it's one, because of a basic and predictable defense. That's number one in my book. Number two would be the complete underperformance of the defensive line. And number three would be Ohio State's inability to block for their running backs. So mm -hmm. to me, yeah. it's a core, a core reason why Ohio State lost this game was because of the offensive line's inability to run block. Yeah, no, it's they struggled against a smaller, more agile defensive line. And it, and it showed here. It's something that the, this experience offensive line needs to get better at and expected of them to be able to ha handle this um, uh, defensive line from Oregon. But I mean, 
you got to get hats off to the Oregon's coaching staff for getting their players ready for that. It's a defensive line, I'm not, a defensive line, by the way, that was missing its best player, a linebacking core that was missing one of its best players. We yep. that that can't go unstated. Yes, absolutely. And then uh, special teams. Fine, whatever. Special teams. A couple really nice. Actually, not not fine, whatever. I think special teams played well. I think they get an A. There was a really nice punt that led to... They had two at the one-yard line. Yeah. Um, Yeah, they get an A. It's fine. The only only knock was the the kick out of bounds. Stop asking them to do that. My answer... that, That goes to coaching in my mind. Stop asking them to try and cough and corner the stupid kickoffs. I thought we were done with that when Urban left. What is that crap? Kick it out of the back of the end zone and play some goddamn defense. Yep. All right, Jared. All right. Real quick, with some Ask Sloopcast questions here. Uh, <laughs> Stuart, as among, uh, among with many, many other Ohio State fans, asked the question, fire, carry, Combs? I'm... So the question is, can you get a first, not until after the season? I don't think that's, I don't think that's going to be, I don't think that's the answer. Um, I think what I'd love to do, and I don't know if this is possible. I don't know if Kerry would accept it, but at the end of the year, I'd love to keep him as a cornerbacks coach and replace him as a defensive coordinator. Ideally, that is what I would love to do. Um, I've seen that I've seen something like that happen once ever. And that's when Luke Fickle agreed to become the defensive coordinator after being the head coach. I, and I've just I, never seen. I've never seen anything like that. And that was a real bizarre situation that allowed that to sort of happen with little to no hurt feelings. And quite frankly, a Luke Fickle who absolutely loves Ohio State and would do anything for Ohio like. I love Luke Fickle and he loves us and that's it that's all great. I just I don't necessarily see Kerry Combs accepting a demotion. You just see that happen so rarely. So I I think he unless something drastic changes over the next few months, I think we're seeing Kerry Combs last year's last year at Ohio State. Z Spikes asks, do we have the worst statistical fourth down defense in this country? It would defense? have to be up there. Yeah, it would have to be up there. Yeah, I, I I can't really pull that kind of number, but I would tell you fourth down offense, Ohio State's in the last quarter. Now I assumed he meant offense as well. You said he's you wrote defense. You said defense. I heard offense. Yeah. Well, here's a question. Well, um, will uh, Combs from Stewart again? Will Combs coordinate versus Rutgers? Yes. I don't see him. I think, yeah, I think so too. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ty Hines. By the way, um, we have a really nice showing in the uh, live chat right now. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Ty Hines asks, um, playoff chances stumped? No. No, it's still, it's it's only week two. There's still a lot of football left. Ohio State's still in decent position to make the playoffs. You just, you you went out. You went out. We we've said it many many times over the past number of seasons. You get one. You get one life. Yeah. If you're playing like a Mario game, you get one life. That was Ohio State's one life. You can't you can't mess up from there. I agree. Yeah, I totally agree. Right. Uh, Buckeye, it's too Zach, early in the year for a... playoff scenarios, but yeah. neither Ohio State nor Clemson are out of it yet. Yeah. Is this a day? will not relinquish defensive control over to Combs or Combs uh, isn't cut out to be a college defensive coordinator? Um, the latter. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, insider stuff about the relationship currently going on between head coach and defensive coordinator right now. And it's not great. And, um, there are certainly issues at play right now. Yep. Uh, Buckeye Esquire, given the caliber of opponents over the next few weeks, what will, what will be sufficient to demonstrate defensive improvements? 
Do we need, do we need first team shutouts? Um, I don't know. Uh, what's you, I don't even necessarily need shutouts. I just need competence. I need variety. Um, and I need to, the, I need for the defense to not just look good against Akron. If you're playing Akron, I need you to dominate Akron. Um, I don't expect them to do that. Unfortunately, um, it's I, I don't know if they can completely redesign their defense in a week because that appears to be what needs to happen. They need to completely redesign their defense. Uh, I, I I just don't see it happen. I just don't see it happen. Um, the, the, the improvement will happen incrementally over time. That's that, and that's really all I can say about that. Brawley asks, what is the strength of this team after two games? The wide receivers, the wide receivers, um, I feel like they're good at pass protection. And again, I get that like CJ Stroud is doing really well. I, I think the people are just, again, people being lazy armchair analysts are ripping CJ Stroud right now. And I'm not saying he's perfect, but if CJ Stroud gets like a little bit better and he forces the forces the defenses to not just go into straight up make CJ Stroud beat us mode. And that opens things up for the running backs. This offense becomes unstoppable. Yep. All right. Last question here from Nomad. Um, besides putting Combs in the booth, what else should Ohio State, uh, what else should Ohio State do to correct the defensive woes? You, you again, complete redesign of the defense, more variety in the play calling. You you can't live and die by man. And especially now with no Josh Proctor. One of the reasons why we've seen this defense work for Ohio State in the past was having amazing play. Jordan Fuller, most notably at safety, and they they're not going to have that now. So on top of them needing to stop doing it, they especially need to stop doing it now because they don't have Josh Proctor anymore. Yep. All right. All right. We're way over in time, Jared. I don't have anything in, in Kyle's corner. So let's go ahead and end today's episode. Yeah. I just want to encourage everyone to to visit all of the stuff that we ask you to uh, just go to the sleepcast.com. You can find merchandise links there. You can find YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and discord and Patreon links there. So just go to the sleepcast.com cruise all the links we have and click on a few of them and see what happens. It might be fun. Um, the Patreon, or excuse me, well, the Patreon too, we've got a few new Patreon people recently. Uh, the Discord seems to be growing more and more and more like exponentially faster and it's a lot of fun. Um, so just uh, come come hang out with us. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band called City Lights. They're a pop punk band. Um, you can check them out on Bandcamp and uh Uh, We'll drop links down in the show notes like we always do. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is a pop punk band called City Lights. 